<laughs> Are you still nervous? <laughs> Just joking. I'm, I'm getting better. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, let's, let's hear your story. Because you, you grew up in England, right? Yes, I'm from England. That's why I speak this way. Although my family say I sound American now, which is crazy, right? <laughs> um, yes. I grew up in a Church of England church, so it's like... Not quite Catholic, but very close, very traditional, very religious. Um, you turn up on a Sunday, but basically you do whatever else you want for the whole week, you know. And growing up, my life looked no different to someone that wasn't a Christian, but you just kind of felt guilty because you said you were a Christian. And it was very weird, but, but if anyone had asked me, hey, well, you know, well, what, are you a Christian? I'd have been, um, are you a Christian? I'd have been, absolutely, yes, you know. I know about Noah and I know about Jesus. Please don't ask me about them because I won't get the details right. But I've heard things and I'm definitely a Christian. And so, you know, growing up though, I, it was around the starting early teens. I was just noticing that, you know, even the youth leaders and the teachers and everyone older than me that I looked up to was sleeping around, partying, doing all the stuff that we say we shouldn't do. And like, I remember going to Alpha course because you had to get confirmed to take communion. And, like, we would be reading things that we had to know so we could become a real Christian. And we're reading about Satan, and then the leader's saying, Satan's not even real. You know, it's just lies. And it's stealing. That's Satan. And I remember being like, I got home, and I was like, Mom, it's a load of crap. I have never heard anything so stupid. We're reading things, and then the teachers are saying the opposite thing. And I just remember I, I was so over it. I thought it's just really hypocritical people trying to feel better about themselves. And I really was just done. So, you know, I tried to find fulfillment in just the normal things that any teenager would, like becoming popular. I was really sporty. I was good at stuff, like, and... I had a cool boyfriend from two years above, and it was like, oh my gosh, this is totally awesome. And I thought my life was so cool, you know? And um, it wasn't until I was 15 years old, I got dragged along to a church camp, and um, there was a worship time happening, and it was the same thing that you said, all of a sudden, I'm in tears, and I'm feeling something I've never felt before. It's the same stories I've heard before, and I'm around similar people that I've been around, but all of a sudden, I'm sensing that God's on me, he's real, he's asking me to come forward right now, I don't know what to do, because I don't want to, and I hate these people, and they're all liars, and I don't know what to do, you know, and, um, and I remember them saying, you know, if you feel like you was meant to do something with music in your life, then come forward, and all of a sudden, I'm, a, I'm at the front, and I don't know what I'm doing, I'm weeping, someone's <laughs> praying for me, and pushing me over on the floor, and I'm like, stop pushing me, <laughs> I'm on the floor crying, what do I do down here, I don't know, you know, and <laughs> It was just really a bizarre moment where God moved on me. I don't know what was happening, but it was real. And then directly after, um, you know, this prophet calls me to the front and basically tells me that I've got to change my life in front of this room of hundreds of people. And I'm like, um. so I go home and I don't change a thing because I knew he was asking me to get rid of stuff that I loved. I loved, I knew he was gonna ask me to change my life and I just did not want to. So I spent the whole next year and my life looked no different at all. It was like an amazing moment that I quite easily forgot. And um, it wasn't until a year later, I was 16 years old and for some reason I miraculously came over to America to do a Bible school in Kenosha, Wisconsin, random and middle of nowhere. And um, it, I had to leave my entire life behind. God ripped me out of my life, and I didn't realize that I was never going home. I thought I was going home in a few months, but um, God removed me from my situation, and I met him in a way that I just didn't think was possible. Like, all of a sudden, I realized God is real. If God's real, then this story I'm reading is incredible. Like, all of a sudden, things became exciting. I'm like, oh, that's why people read the Bible, you know? Like, I was reading about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and like, they got saved from fire. They were thrown into a fire so hot, the people throwing them in died. Yeah. I'm like, that's the same God that you're saying I know? I know, it was just like everything changed because it became real. And you know, it took me giving up things that I, I thought my life was awesome and great, and I didn't realize it could get better. 
you know what I mean? And, and so it wasn't until I was 16 years old, I just, I met the Lord in a way I didn't know was possible and it's changed my life completely since. And now I'm doing things I never thought I would do ever because God's real and you can when he's with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. That's awesome. <laughs>